Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Hello Church. I am Justin Trapp. I'm Wade Beard, and we're in the middle of season three. We're talking about the church service, and today, Justin, we're getting ready to talk about everyone's favorite part of a Sunday morning gathering, Man. and that's the announcements. And this is, I'll, I'll get to be honest, this is a shorter episode, so. Yeah. You Just really, like we like our announcements. <laughs> that's true. Mm. That's true. Uh, if you listen on two speed, might want to slow this one down. <laughs> <laughs> listen on three speed. We're going to talk about the announcements. You know, the announcements aren't always fun, but they are necessary. They can be. They, they can be. They're a necessary evil. And we're going to talk about how you can make your announcements segment during the service flow a little bit easier, uh, be more of informative yeah and hopefully probably a little bit shorter so today we're going to be covering the 10 commandments of church announcements there are 10 commandments it's that's biblical cool. did you make that up 10 commandments you know that's cool 10 mm. yeah right <laughs> i wanted to go a little old testament today <laughs> well thank you for joining us for season three i hope you're enjoying all of this season this is our second episode so far we talked about planning last episode yeah. we've got some really great stuff that we're going to be discussing here for the next couple of months before we jump into those 10 commandments uh do we have any horror stories announcement well, horror stories i was thinking not too long ago t tim shout out tim uh he works on mm -hmm. our team yeah. tim was a pastor mm -hmm. lead still, pastor still is a pastor yeah he, he's on staff at a church yeah but he was a lead pastor at one time yeah and he was at a smaller church right and it was he has a he has kind of a humorous story as it relates to the announcements he, he does so uh he was telling us one day that he was doing the announcements and a, a individual in the audience stopped him ran up on stage, grabbed the mic from him, and started giving an announcement she had for her ministry. And uh, yeah, shared that with the audience, spur the moment. That's always a yeah. scary thing, right? right? Somebody's talking on the microphone and you haven't planned it out. You're not sure what they're going to say. Uh, I thought it was really funny. I've seen people come up and they've, they've given the mic to people or they've had people do announcements and it goes on yeah. and on forever, where it's like, hey, we're gonna have somebody come up and talk about the men's retreat. That was really awesome. And the person, go, and they just go on for 15 minutes about the men's retreat. I'm sure it was great, but that's a long time. Yeah, I watch the UFC a lot, and Joe Rogan, he's one of the commentators in the UFC. He's a comedian, everyone, you probably heard of Joe Rogan. A lot of times after the after the fight is over, he'll uh -huh. interview the winner. Okay. And sometimes the winner gets really excited and just, they're uh -huh. just really enthusiastic and they're trying to grab the mic from him to sort of like shout out their sponsors yeah. or or their uh, you know family or whatever. And Joe never lets go of the microphone. He knows they'll try to pull it from him. Like, hey, Joe, I want to say something. Never lets it go because mm. he knows, right? If I give them this microphone, we're gonna be here a while. We're gonna be here a while, and we might get fined by the yeah, right, is it FCA or something, FEC, <laughs> FCC, something like that. One of the government agencies that have acronyms. So. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta you gotta watch out for that. Uh, so okay, let's let's jump into yeah. Ten we promised this would be shorter, and it's we, already the longest intro of the season. Uh, I I'll say this. Um, so Justin and I used to serve at a church together. We actually do serve at a church together now, but yeah, we're we at do. another church together. And we did the announcements every single week. And this was like old school, so no videos. It yeah. was just me and him giving the announcements. And we had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, we did. We and got we got in trouble a few times. We got in trouble a few times. But there were people. A few people rededicated their life <laughs> to the Lord. <laughs> oh, goody. There are people, multi, m people would come up and just say, yeah. you know what? Y'all's announcement time is one of my favorite times in the service. To which I would always <laughs> get uncomfortable when they would say that and say, please don't tell our pastor that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> please. Mm -hmm. You might not let us do uh, the announcements anymore. So we, we had fun. So it is possible, when you think about yeah. announcements, it is possible to do something fun uh, and memorable uh, where people will remember what you're trying to tell them. Because that's the point. If people don't remember what you are saying, there's no reason for the announcements. Yeah. And how do they remember? It's it's if you follow one of the Ten Commandments. So let's start. Okay. First, yeah. ten co first commandment of church announcements is be prepared. 
Yes. Don't just wing it. And it, I know it sounds weird because it's like, oh, it's just the announcement. Yeah, I'm just talking about easy. youth camp. Yeah, or, just gotta gotta get the date right. No, you, you really need to think through what you're gonna say. So, pastor, you're probably not doing the announcements. That's good. We talked about this last week. That, that need, goes to point. Yeah, you don't that need goes to do to it. The ninth commandment. But whenever you have somebody do the announcements, make sure you get them the proper announcements beforehand and tell them to to practice. Yeah. Tell them to talk to someone who's been a part of this event and share Mm -hmm. that story and then give them a window. Say, I want you to do it in this amount of time. Because if not, it could go wild. So be prepared is the first one. Uh, The second one is be selective. Be selective. You don't have to give every single announcement on stage of what's Mm -hmm. going on at the church. Like Tim found out sometimes yeah. people want their things announced but that doesn't mean it should be announced yeah. be selective and a good rule of thumb is if if it impacts 75 80 percent of the church i think it's safe to say it'd be a, a, a great great selection for announcements during the service yeah otherwise you could uh communicate a particular announcement let's say it only really impacts a small segment in your church they can do that through the the various ministries or through yeah. those people groups or in the email or sure. slides or something like that and I, as i was thinking through this i think a really good system is to communicate to people say hey if there's too many announcements people won't remember it mm-hmm. so we might actually if we put your if we put your announcement in the announcement segment, uh, people might not actually even really register. So we've got to keep it slim. And when when you develop that system, basically say, if it meets this criteria at, at this point in time, we'll include it. If not, we won't. Yep. And so it's not a matter of your judgment anymore. You just tell people to say, mm-hmm. hey, this is the system and this is what we're gonna do. And hopefully that'll keep people's feelings from being hurt. So it's not personal. It's like, hey, we've already developed this. And the only reason we wanna do this is because we want people to remember the announcements. And if we do too many, they just aren't, and it's gonna hurt your event. Yeah, and that really, if you have a system in place, a selection system, it really takes the pressure off you from you being the bad guy to Sister Papuvnik and Brother Killjoy, who always want to, you know, people to come to their Bible study. Mm. And so, I, I, you know, it, it's important to have a selection system. Mm. Number three, greet the guests. Yeah. Acknowledge the guests in the room when you're making the announcements. So let's say you have an event going on and it has to do with... Uh, let's say your married couples say, "Hey, if you're a guest with us, uh, mm-hmm. we have this ministry. We have this event coming up, and it's you know, share the why behind it. Acknowledge your guest because maybe if you just kind of come out with the announcement, the name of the event, they don't really know what's going on, and perhaps half the people in the room don't really know what's mm-hmm. going on. So share the why, acknowledge your guests, but also introduce yourself." If you're not a pastor on staff, even if you are a pastor on staff, I think it's always important to introduce yourself. I volunteer at our church, and when I do the announcements or I do a generosity moment, I always say, hi, my name is Justin. My wife and I and our three boys have been attending Wake, which is the name of our church, Wake Church. We've been attending Wake for several years now. And what am I trying to do? I'm trying to be relatable. I'm trying to share a little bit about myself. I have three boys. And so anytime you can be a little bit more relatable, they they, you're not just some random dude or gal like, on the who stage. Is, who is that person? Yeah, I think that goes. That's a great start, essentially. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you talk about guests or you talk to guests, be very clear on what you would like them to do. Yeah, like what's that next step? If you say, "Hey, we want you to do this," and then we want you to do this, and then you, we want you to do this, it's just it's not going to work. We want you to. F- uh, the single next step we want you to do is to fill out the connection card, which has twenty seven steps. <laughs> I, I I think it was on Instagram or something. Uh, there was this meme, and it was like a visitor shows up for the first time. Hi, we'd like you to fill out this. 15 step card and then it was just a video of the like nah 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 <laughs> you know people just but so so find something easy yeah very simple um 
We, we have a free gift for you at the Connection Center. Get a coffee stop. cup full of candy. Yeah, stop by, say hi. Yeah, you know that that's the, that that could be the single action step. Number four is make them visual. Don't mm-hmm. just have someone up there. Have a visual tied to the announcement. So if you have a graphic, mm. uh, you can do this really easy on Ministry Pass, ministrypass.com. We have all different types of announcement graphics, event graphics, service slides. And we also have an integration with Canva. And if you're familiar with Canva, yeah. you can take anything and edit it very quickly and then export the the files to all different types of formats. So whatever types of formats that you need for your church, for online, for social, for at your service, whether you have a, an old school four by three ratio projector screen or you have the 16 by nine, whatever the case may be, you can actually get all of that really quickly in Canva. And Ministry Pass makes that possible because we have all of our announcement graphics uh, integrated with a Canva link. So yeah, I think it's important. If you have a samurai training school at your church, you need an image of a samurai there it is. on your screen. Tom uh, Cruise, <laughs> the last samurai. Uh, we've alluded to this before, uh, but number five would be to tell stories. And so if you're talking about youth camp or you're talking about a men's ministry or a Bible study, tell a yeah. story. And that... Uh, kind of goes back to uh, being selective in your announcements because you're not going to be able to tell a story if you have 10 announcements. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to get through those quickly. But if you have one or two and you have an opportunity to say, hey, here's an individual who attended this event last year. they uh, Their life was changed. Uh, yeah. That's really powerful. It goes to the why of that event and of that announcement. So uh, make sure to have stories I saw something recently from our friend Kenny Jang. Uh, it was an Instagram post, and he said most people are like, I think he's like 80% of people just like constantly are daydreaming. And what's the one thing that gets them out of that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good story. And so mm-hmm. I know for me, I don't usually pay attention during the announcements. I'm just kind of like, I don't know, just kind of looking around, just oh, look at the lights, look at you know, this. But whenever I hear a story, I'm like, oh, I kind of lean yeah. forward. So, Hey, Jesus spent a third of the New Testament sharing stories, right? Because he knew that we, we sort of snap out of it. We pay attention. Stories inspire us. They connect with our hearts, our souls. And so if you can share a story, point back to a story, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, that goes a long way in making an announcement about... Yeah, a large that. chunk of Jesus' discourses were or parables, mm-hmm. and so finding an opportunity to, to do that. Number six, the sixth commandment for church announcements is tie everything back to the vision. How do the announcements connect people to the mission and or community of your church? And if you can sort of remind people of that attachment, I think that goes a long way in promoting the vision of the church and articulating it, but also keeping in front of people all of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not a great thing if you go up to a random church person and say, hey, what's the vision of your church? Yeah. Yeah. And most people probably don't know, right? I'd be like, um, live, laugh, love. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Love God, love people, serve the world. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like a generic uh, church mission or vision. So um, just tie everything back to the vision, the mission of the church. And I think that also goes a long way in helping people have Uh buy-in as well. Yeah. If you have a serve day and one of your core values is to make your community more like heaven, then you could say, hey, one of our values is, is to really make is to bring heaven to earth in yeah. our city, in our community. And we're gonna do that by serving these individuals this this next week. So tie it back. It helps people to remember what you're all about. And then it helps people to remember why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, the seventh commandment is be creative. You know, it's great to have visuals. You can use video. It's great to have someone up there presenting the announcement, but you can also get a little creative with it. Have a little fun with it. Yeah. I remember one time, I'm not saying this is a great idea. This is kind of a dumb idea. But Mm. when I was a youth pastor, the kids loved it. So we tried to present the announcements in different ways. And one time as a youth pastor, I went up and I went through the drive-thru of Taco Bell and I ordered the announcements. And the Taco Bell employee was so confused. Obviously. And finally, he was just like, I I don't think we have that here, sir. (laughs) (laughs) But the kids thought it was 
funny. And uh, that you know, I got major brownie points with 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 the children's in the youth group that that yeah. night when we played it. But obviously, you can't you can't order announcements from Taco Bell yeah. every night? Yeah, yeah. And get, that's sort of a juvenile you example. You know, it's funny. It's funny. You got to be nice to yeah. drive through people, right? But one of my favorite drive through little pranks is when someone orders like an ice cream cone, and when they hand it to them, they just grab the ice cream instead of the cone <laughs> and they just the, put it in their mouth and just drive off. See that. I think that's oh. okay because it doesn't it doesn't hurt the drive through individual and it probably brightens their day. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's kind okay. Of Make sure you pay. It's obviously. memorable, to it's, say the least. That's memorable. So be creative. Justin and I would be creative. Uh, when we did announcements, we'd uh, create funny jokes. Um, I think one time we created maybe like a little hip hop beat in the background during our yeah. announcements. We, oh, we, we did, uh, remember Jimmy Fallon would slow jam the news? Yeah, yeah. So we would slow jam the announcements. Mm -hmm. That was fun. We had a, a rodeo Sunday. Yeah. That's just something that a Yeehaw. lot of churches do in, in Texas. The, in the South, man. Uh, yeah. And we filmed the announcements in front of a cow. We, yeah, we, we, we found we this just like found a farm. Cow. Yeah, it was this farm. Some cows out in the pasture, and we just yeah. we set up shop with the cowboy hats and some flannel. Mm -hmm. I even bought like the uh, the the beef jerky chew that looks like skull. Oh man, it tasted awful, guys. Don't yeah. that stuff. I would not recommend that stuff. No, just enjoy. So, and I think it, I think it'd be memorable just to find a cow and do n announcements, even if it's not Rodeo Sunday. Yeah, people are just be like, why is the cow there? And you're like, yeah, I don't know. This this announcement sponsored <laughs> by Chick Fil A. Uh, number eight. Eighth commandment or rule or guideline would be uh, use different people to present. Uh, we all say, man, this is, we want to have a, a diverse community. Um, but <laughs> what is it, like, who are the people on stage? Yeah. So make sure you get different people to do your announcements. Keep it fun. It also helps people to kind of learn more about the volunteers and staff. You mentioned, Justin, uh, walking up to do the offering and saying, hey, my name is Justin, I have three boys. Uh, that Doing that and having different people do that can help people to to kind of uh, understand or learn more about the church. You can get small group leaders to do it. Yeah. And so you could say, hey, my name's Jimmy Bobob and I host a small group at my house. We, you know, we'd love to have you. It's important to be diverse and this is an opportunity for you to do that, but also help people to learn more about individuals in well, the church. Well, I think this goes back to the fifth commandment of church announcements. Okay. Yeah. Remind me what the fifth one was. I'm the tell stories, tell Mr. Stories. Wade. Well, tell stories. If, if I'm up on stage and I'm doing announcements about a women's ministry, right, or mm. a women's event, I don't have a story naturally mm. uh, about how God has touched my life through the women's Bible study, because yeah. I've never been. Yeah. So if you do have uh, someone that could have a, a, a story, a, a testimony, or, or something that, the way that a, a particular ministry, or uh, for example, a women's Bible study has impacted their life, or they you know they grew in their faith, have them do the announcement, because mm. naturally they're gonna be the best ones to tell that story. Yeah. Even if they don't have a lot of experience uh, on stage, that's fine, you can coach them, you can prepare them, you can help them be efficient with that. I think that's going to go a long, uh, like a much longer way, and be more meaningful than if I were to sit up there and yeah. try to just say, "Hey, ladies, Bible study this Tuesday night." Shout out to all the ladies. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it just—it's just not the same. Have the samurai give the announcement about yeah. the samurai yeah. training club. There uh, it is. <laughs> Number nine: Echo the stage on your social media channels. So. Yeah. When you're doing an announcement on the stage, make sure that you're promoting the same announcement on your social media channels. If your church has a Facebook group, yeah. you know, Instagram, Twitter, the like, you want to echo the stage. You don't want the, the stage to be the primary voice or the primary means of communication with your congregation. You want them all to work uh, in harmony together. Yeah. And then number 10 would be utilize email. Uh, so that's the same principle. You're utilizing email to help uh, reinforce mm -hmm. those those announcements, and I think a good I, a good rule of thumb is to remember people might re, people might remember the um, the big idea or the big event, but probably not the details. So if it's youth camp and you say, "Hey, uh, parents, we're meeting here at six a.m.," they'll probably remember. Oh, youth camp's coming up this next week. Will they remember the date and the time? Eh, probably not. So you need to reinforce that through social media and through email. 
Uh, email is also a great way to segment your communication. Oh, yeah, so that's a good idea. If, if you want to promote a senior citizen's uh, you know, museum tour, um, <laughs> that's a yeah. terrible. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to. Or they baseball game. Whatever. Yeah, baseball game. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to think of what I would want to do when I get older, mm -hmm. and that's just tour museums on an RV. You know what I mean? That sounds like the good life. I, I mean, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah. That doesn't sound bad. So, but let's say you want to, you want, you want to promote that event. That event is important to the people that it can, that it touches, but it's not for everyone at your church. A great way to segment that communication is to have an, a list on your, on your email CRM or a lot of the CHM, um, uh, CHMS uh, platforms. You can do this as well. You can tag mm -hmm. people or you can do a filter based on their age and and make sure those people are the only people that get that email. I think this is a great way to sort of highlight events that won't necessarily make it on the stage or maybe not earn a post on your entire uh, Facebook profile, but nonetheless, the, that event is important to the people it reaches. So uh, that that is a, a great way to do that. If you go online, you start searching for museum stuff, you might get targeted by Man. the senior citizen group. We're, we're all, everyone listening, your phone knows. We're all now you're going to get it. The, like, your your Boy. oasis group at your church yeah. is gonna oasis. be is gonna be targeting you. Older adults still in service. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Your legacy group. We're all gonna be seeing like World War II museum, the <laughs> car museum, the coffee museum. <laughs> We're gonna go uh, enjoy all the things we enjoyed in the '90s. That's what all of us mm -hmm. will do when we get older. Man, remember those days. That is our episode. Those are 10 commandments of announcements. We said we're going shorter. I feel like we had, know. A little, had a little too much fun today. Yeah. Uh, my main takeaway is to just be prepared. Uh, be prepared. Don't wing it. Uh, you plan out your service. Why not plan out your announcements? Plan out what you're going to talk about a few days in advance. Make sure you get that information to somebody and make sure they think through it before they get on stage. Yeah, my main takeaway is make it visual. That's that's one of the commandments, the fourth commandment. Uh, don't just have someone up there talking, but also sh show something visually that reinforces what they're saying. Uh, and you know, you can do this really easily mm -hmm. using Ministry Pass. If you don't know what Ministry Pass is, if you've never used it, uh, we have uh, thousands of of graphics and media, as also as well as sermon series resources. 14 day free trial sign up you can download what you need we have a sermon series on every book of the bible it's it's pretty uh, amazing we have about 75 years yeah. worth of sermon resources and help so you could start at the beginning of our resource Man. section and work your way and you you won't get to the end of it uh, yeah it's it's pretty awesome i also want to let you know that if you would like some free canva ready announcement packs so we've got, we talked about having a visuals for your announcements. If you'd like some announcements that you can edit in Canva, just go to hellochurchpodcast.com forward slash Canva dash announcements. So it's hellochurchpodcast.com forward slash Canva dash announcements. It's kind of long, so just maybe go to the show notes. You can You'll click that link. link yeah. We'll give you a free uh, template. And if you don't have Canva, you can sign up for free and you can test that out. And uh, we've got ton of those on ministrypass.com mm -hmm. for every event with the exception of the samurai thing with every event that you could possibly think of so we don't have tom cruise either so we don't we're, we're working on it though mm. we're working on it all right hope everyone has a great day a great week we'll see you next time on hello church see you later